visibility into the mints, the wholesalers, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a gradual increase. Right. Mints are not going to give up on manipulating the prices until they have no inventory to manipulate. Once they have zero, then, okay, now, now what's the price, guys? And you saw this last year during COVID. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. And today we have Tyler Wall, the CEO of SD Bullion on with us again. Hi Tyler, welcome back to Yankee Stacking. Hi, thanks for having me back on Yankee. My pleasure. I hear you've been really busy with some interesting facility changes at SD Bullion. So what's going on? So eight years ago, we're, we've, we moved into the, the facility that we currently utilize and we've, we've outgrown the facility, you know, several years ago um you know our debt-free policy is as uh probably delayed that move a little bit longer than what most businesses would would have uh would have would have done but uh for us you know this new facility for the, this the scale that we're at currently i mean no longer are we getting in boxes from our mints and suppliers we're getting pallets and we're mm. getting uh many pallets and you know brinks trucks delivery stuff that we we weren't experiencing eight years ago is now the scale that we're at now. So uh, having that ability to move pallets and in, in, in large 25,000 ounce uh, pallet silver, uh, full of silver <laughs> around our facility is a big deal. And then furthermore, our depository is also a big deal. I mean, um, SD depositories continues to grow. There's a lot of people that um, have taken advantage, you know, a lot, a lot of higher net worth individuals where maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense to store a, several million dollars at your house. Maybe there, there's a, there's there eventually becomes a, a, you know, a tolerance level uh, that you say, you know, I, I have maybe some in my house, but maybe I want to store some with, with somebody I trust. And we're seeing a lot of that uh, come into play. Furthermore, there, there's this sales tax, you know, issues. Luckily, we've got a couple of states where, uh, you know, the state of Ohio is one where uh, we've got sales tax taken back off the books where people from Ohio can purchase without sales tax now. But there's some other states that still tax precious metal uh, transactions and there's no sales tax. It falls underneath the Michigan sales tax rules when you um, purchase and you and you put it in the depository. So we've seen a lot of interest in, in that area. And then furthermore, uh, we should be able to get IRA approved here shortly uh, thereafter. So once we get an IRA approved depository, um, there's, there's tons of customers that have asked us to store their IRAs in our depository, and that just hasn't been uh, available to them so far. Um, since we last talked, gold and silver got hammered. Gold's down about 10%, I think, from February's highs, and it's now just running flat. Um, silver's down over 20% during that time frame. That's technically a bear market now in silver. Why the pain? Um, it's very frustrating, I guess, to be a, you know, be a uh, gold and silver bug myself from for the last, you know, 13 years and, and, you know, kind of be right on your prediction, you know, that inflation is going to be an issue mm -hmm. and see what we thought was going to happen, right? I mean, we've been talking about this for a decade that we, we said this was going to happen. This was going to happen. This is going to happen. And to see gold and silver kind of just stay range bound trading and between the 22 and the 28 on silver and, and gold just struggled to get back up to, you know, 1900 even, not even challenge 2000 is very, very frustrating. Um, and I, I think that that's, I think we'll eventually see that, that change. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, you look at natural gas prices in Europe right now, you know, and you see a 40 up 40% in one day. And, you know, I, it feels like just looking at the inside of the market, like, our visibility into not retail precious metals, but also the mints, the wholesalers, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a gradual increase. If we're going to get to a point where um, the, the base metal is no longer able to be purchased by national mints or refineries or, you know, the, the private mints, which has never happened. I mean, it's never happened, you know, 30 or 40 years. I mean, the people that we talk to on a, on a daily basis, uh, the, the major traders, the major, you know, bullion banks, right? They, the, they're lead traders who think that they have all the wisdom in the world and all the trading experience in the world have never traded in an environment where they couldn't pick up the phone and buy silver or gold from somebody. You know, they've always right. had the ability to buy it from somebody. Mm -hmm. What happens when 
they pick up the phone and they can't buy it from somebody. And it feels much more like a market that's going to be much more similar to the natural gas industry or you know what we've what we've seen also in Texas when they had the, the windstorms and, and, and the cold spell last year. It feels much more like that market than than the, the gradual increases that you you might want as a you know a gold and silver investor. And I, I just think that's partly related to how the banks manipulate the prices. You know, the banks won't give up on manipulating the prices. This is, again, my opinion. Right, right. Banks are not going to give up on manipulating the prices until they have no inventory to manipulate. Once they have zero, then, okay, now now what's the price, guys? And you saw this last year during COVID, during during the March, April time frame where you got into that that uh, crunch. That, that was people requiring physical delivery of, of the metal, and it was going for $70 more than, than what, what it – People said it should have gone for, mm-hmm. and that was because there's a nobody had physical. They just wanted to trade paper until until there was no physical left, and they couldn't move it around. So last year it was it was a logistical issue, right? It was it was all based on logistics and be able to transport metal. And you would think with the volume of metal, I you know I'm looking at how much metal we're selling. We're the third largest precious metal retail in the country, and I know how much the number one and number two are selling based off looking at online data and analytics. And, you know, we have some inside data as well. And I'm thinking like, if you just add up how much we're selling plus those two, I don't know where all this metal's coming from. I mean, is, we've been doing this for a year and a half and I'm wondering at what point is there no metal to be found? And I'm not talking about retail friendly metal. I'm talking about buying metal from a mint or, uh, you know, national mint and them not having the metal to, to produce now, I feel like when we see it up move, it's going to be significant up move, more like what we saw last year, but more prolonged, where we, we basically gapped up from 1214 to 26. Right. I feel like we're going to do that again when we, when we go higher here. Talk about the debt ceiling fight that's looming. Well, you know, there, there's things that, you know, I want to happen and there's things that I think are going to happen. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like one of those things where if, it's kind of contradicting, right? If, if, if they, do, if they behave, like I think they're going to behave, then precious metal prices go up. If they behave in the best interest of the country, then precious metals might be static or they might go down. Um, so it's been like that for a while. I mean, but I don't think things have, are changing and it hasn't changed with whether it be a Republican in office or a Democrat in office. I mean, the, what, what continues to be um, agreed upon for the most part is that we're going to continue to increase the debt as a country. And, you know, you've seen this, you know, up to 28 trillion plus of national debt. And I don't think they're going to eventually pass this debt ceiling thing. That, that, that's, of course they do. Me, they that's always even, do. <laughs> the question is if they're going to limit it at like 40 trillion or if they're going to have it unlimited, right? right. I mean, I, that's the only question in my head. It's like, they're going to increase it. Like, what, what, what's the terms? And, you know, the infrastructure plan, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it didn't pass. I mean, personally, I mean, I, I, I think it would be, it would have been positive if it had passed for precious metal prices, but who needs more stimulus? There's no workers. We do not need to increase our, our, our dependencies on more raw materials that you can't find. Those raw material prices are going to go up. Like, well, infrastructure, <laughs> who wants to increase the demand for the materials right now? Like, that makes no sense. And so, right. yeah, for me, it's like, uh, hopefully it doesn't pass. I think they'll pass something. It sounds like they're going to pass a reduced, you know, something so they can say they passed something but you know i, I hope not I mean, i've had people ask me yankee when would you stop stacking and it's quite simple actually yeah. if the government would live within its means would stop yeah. monetizing debt and return to sound money i'd stop stacking not yeah i mean i don't think that's even possible though. i know right right i mean that that's the thing like if they actually withdrew the, the money and they withdrew the stimulus and this is again my personal opinion like you know, I was sitting around a table last year around COVID, right? And um, my uh, brother-in-law owns uh, a subway. He owns you know, about eight subways and has about 30 different rental properties that he rents out. And, uh, you know, he's asked, we're talking about the economy. And I was like, oh, this, is, this is ridiculous. What are we giving out stimulus checks for? We need to get people back to work. Several months after COVID, we need to get people back to work. He said, well, well, Tyler, we, we got to give stimulus money out to people because they don't have a job right now. I'm like, and they don't have a job. This is this whole economy is going to crash. And, you know, if the economy crashes, then there's going to be people that that are dying of hunger out there. And I'm thinking like, no, you don't understand. Like the more money that we give out, 
the more money we give to people, and the longer this goes on, the more people that are eventually going to uh, be starving, uh, you know, in, in some ways, like whether that be without housing or whether that be food or water, and eventually the government can't solve it because their currency is worth nothing. So even if they give out a trillion dollars to, you know, X amount of people, it doesn't matter that that money's worthless. And that thought process does not cross through to the majority of people when they think about stimulus. They always think that the government will have a way to solve a problem. And that's just not true. And I, I don't think we're at a point where the government could just say like, oh, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling. We're going to reduce our, our spending. We're going to reduce our, uh, you know, some of our social programs to offset the fact that we can't re raise the debt ceiling. It's just not going to happen. It's, it's impossible. Gonna... It's impossible politically. It would it's be not going to work. Suicide. Yeah. Right. 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 It's not going right to work. Thing. So. So, yeah, for, for me, I'm like you. I was like, I don't know if there is a time where I'm not interested in precious metals in my in my lifetime. Your company. I mean, it it has a A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. You've got a five star overall customer satisfaction rating. You've been yeah. the number one fastest growing precious metals dealer in the U.S. What has been your secret sauce at SD Bullion? Well, that's a good question. You know, for us, it's, it's been basically growing in with our means. Like we discussed last time, we've taken on zero debt and, um, you know, we've we've increased our, our overhead, uh, especially now with this new building that we discussed. But at the same time, it's been in perspective of our volume. And so um, we've been able to continue to have, you know, low prices uh, that we, 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 we strive ourselves, we, we pride ourselves on is, is the low prices and then also offering the fast the fast service. And so I'm complaining about the shipping, the shipping prices, but, but typically we're, we're, we're trying to ship as fast as possible. So we never want to be that, that place where somebody places an order and we're two to three months out from shipping their order. You know, our, our goal is to ship out in a normal market, one to three business days. And the, and the fastest, the faster we can get our products to people, the, the more often they buy from us. They, they're like, wow, that was so easy. They're used to an Amazon-like experience and that we try to strive ourselves like an Amazon experience. And so I think it's been a combination thing, low prices. Uh, we probably are uh, some of the most outspoken you know, people in this market because we care so much about precious metals. You know, Like we've talked about, I was, a, I was a stacker from the very beginning before we even started this company. So I understand other stackers and I understand why I want to buy the metals. I can come on here and talk about metals because I personally own them and I have for a while. And, um, you know, and I think that probably gets relayed through our website because when we folk, when we started out, all we knew was bullion, right? I mean, we didn't care about this, these graded products or these numismatic products. Like we, we love bullion. We love low price bullion. And we, and we know the shipping service has got to be good. And we want our website to be really good and the payment options to be good. So I think you combine all those different things. And, you know, that's what led, has led to SE Bullion's success. And, you know, we definitely appreciate partnerships like, like yourself. And you found us as a customer. And, uh, you know, we value everybody else that's, that's pretty much started from us from the ground floor up and now have started their YouTube channels. And we're, and we're, we're on, them, on their channels talking to the people that you've, you've been educating with. For the last uh, several years. Yeah, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. It's uh, sdbullion.com slash Yankee. If uh, you want to check out that link, I'd appreciate it. In fact, is that, I think that still sends uh, people to the Silver Eagle sweepstakes that's still on, yes. right? Yeah, that's we're exciting. giving away a month, uh, 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 B2 uh, 2021 Munster box. Um, I believe it's, it's being given away in, in three months, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit over three months. And so, uh, encourage your listeners to sign up for that. It's yep. uh, it's something that we've had a lot of interest in, like you, you might imagine. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I'd, I'd like to take another 500 ounces off the market to give, <laughs> give it to somebody too. So yes, it's a marketing expense, but That's the second great. thing is it gets more ounces right. out the door and into somebody else's hands. So, <laughs> two months ago, we were buying 90% silver at less than a dollar. I mean, it it came it came down to less than a dollar. Like, it 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 spiked like six or seven bucks during a year ago during COVID, and it hung there for a while. And then there was this little small period where the prices are so volatile that the, the wholesale market we were trading below a dollar about two months ago on ninety percent silver. We had we had new product managers that uh, I'm reading these Slack channels saying, "Hey Tyler, do we can we cut off our ninety percent buys because we have." We were fully loaded. And, uh, you know, 
I'm like, no, we, we, we keep buying. It's less than a dollar, keep buying. And literally like three weeks later, they're like, we don't have enough. Where's our 90%? We need, we need more 90%. It vanished the in price, three weeks? Three weeks. And the prices have now spiked that I think wholesale 90%, we're buying from places for over $5, like halves. Like halves were going for five fifty six bucks at least on the wholesale market. And even if you pay that amount, you're not able to get large quantities. And so 90% led the way. It transitioned over to, to uh, uh, Eagles next. Eagles, are the prices are have, have gone up um, basically about 30% in the last two weeks. Oh, on, uh, on the wholesale uh, market, um, sovereign mint coins have gone up probably about ten to fifteen percent. But add to that delays. It's like we're basically on two to four week. It's, it's pushing three to four week now delays on sovereign mint uh, coins. And uh, you know we're seeing that. So we've seen ninety percent. We've seen eagles. We've seen, and then the production rounds are the same way. We're like out for four to six weeks, maybe maybe closer to eight weeks on uh, private uh, rounds. Wow. Um, uh, how about platinum and palladium? Yeah. Palladium is really hard to find. Um, we've actually seen more retail buying interest though in, in platinum. Uh, we've seen a lot of platinum sales. I think uh, we've had the record platinum sales was the month of August um, when the prices have kind of gone down and that's that's been pretty pretty steady demand. So um, I, I think that, that palladium's we would actually have a lot more palladium sales too if we could find it, but find it's very it. hard to find palladium. One last question I had for you is about yeah. um, privacy. Right. Um, and I really want to understand, you know, we, we love to purchase our silver and our gold and platinum yep. anonymously as much as possible. It's a challenge right. to do that, but with cash and maybe a local coin shop dealer, we can pull that off. How does SD Bullion set up your uh, uh, payment policies to help us and our purchases stay as private as possible? What we can control as a company, and we actually have, you know, I'm, uh, you know if we get a, a subpoena, right? So, I mean, we have, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers. And if we get a subpoena because somebody uh, passes away and their their assets are in a trust or they uh, get a subpoena because somebody is, you know, getting a divorce and their spouse wants to, uh, they get the proper subpoena. We have to provide information on that, but it does have to be subpoenaed properly too. Mm -hmm. We make them go, this is different than a lot of businesses. Our attorney, you know, our, our attorney does not let us just release information just because a, 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 a some law enforcement agency reaches out to us and tells us that this is what's going on. Can you send us information? They're going to have to present a subpoena and serve it properly to us for us to be able to, to us to release information. So, I, I mean, I had a I had a, a talk with our attorney, um, you know, our legal co internal legal counsel, and he's like, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make them follow through this. And, and the law enforcement, I don't know if it's the, you know, somebody Department of Justice uh, of some sort. You're like, I've, I've never done this in 15 years. I've never done this. Like if I, if I email, if I email Google, they have a separate email or a phone number for us to send information to, and they just release it. If I, you know, and they're naming off, you know, Microsoft and all these, and we're like, well, no, that's, 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 no, we're not doing that because we have a privacy policy mm -hmm. and that says you got to subpoena this correctly. So we definitely understand the stacker and understand the reasons for privacy. Um, I would encourage that if you, if you want to understand privacy as it relates to our payment methods, though, realize what those payment methods do, you know, realize that if you write a personal check or a money order cashier's check, look at the place you have to get a money order cashier's check, or look at the place that you have to get a check from or who you write a check from. They're, they're going to be the ones that are, are potentially uh, turning into information, not, not us. <laughs> uh, if you've never purchased your silver and gold, from Tyler's company, you definitely need to check them out. Use my link if you want, sdbillion.com slash Yankee. Thanks again, Tyler. Really appreciate you joining me. Thanks for having me on, Yankee.